something went wrong. Okay, so we're going to work on the wheel. A few tools that you need while you're working on the wheel. Um, these are probably the, the guys that you're going to be looking for. Um, the needle tool, and I'll kind of show you uh, as we go along, the needle tool, wooden knife, the rib tool is helpful, and this probably the most important is the sponge, because when you start working on the wheel, um, you're going to be touching the clay, and if the clay sticks to your fingers, then it kind of goes all wonky and doesn't do what you want it to do. Uh, so uh, these are the, the four main things that you have. The other thing you're going to need, you're going to need a bucket with water in it. Uh, hopefully you can see water swishing around there. Um, off to the side over here. Um, there should be a bucket on the wheels. That's the, where we want to leave them when you're done with your cleanup where you want to put some things. Uh, so that, that's kind of a deal. Let's find some clay uh, that we're going to use. Now this amount of clay, this is about two pounds of clay. Okay, um, Two pounds of clay is about, you know, if you compare my hand size here, it can fit inside about a softball size, maybe, maybe a little bit smaller. A piece of clay that you're going to be using um, and, and that's a good size it's workable enough so where you can you can you can mold it and shape it with your hands sometimes if it's really small it's, it's just too teeny to work with it's too big and massive then you can't move things around as well and so that's kind of a deal on what we're going to work on so about two pounds of clay there is a scale over on the wedging table that you can utilize to uh, make that happen uh, on the exact amounts. First thing I want you to do when you, um, after you cut off a piece of clay or you get a chunk of clay is you need to wedge the clay. That's where you kind of knead it like bread dough. Uh, technique on that one is you take the mound of clay and you push it down and you push it away from yourself. Let's see if I can do this without having it roll too far away. So down and away, bring it up, push it down and push it away like that. And what that does is it starts to roll the clay around itself like that and starts to create this little spiral sort of a thing. You can see where this clay is getting pulled around this way as it rotates around and around. It does three things when you, when you do that. One, it makes your clay consistent so that it doesn't um, have hard spots and soft spots. Okay, so that's kind of a deal. Another thing it does is it helps eliminate air bubbles. We know that air bubbles are kind of our enemy. And so if there's trapped air in this mound of clay, you slice off a chunk, you slap it in there, you slice off another chunk, you slap it in there, you're bringing all this clay in, you could be trapping air inside of it. So wedging the clay will help eliminate those air bubbles. The final thing it does is it helps align the clay particles. Clay particles are flat, um, uh, like let's say that they're flat, like this, this thing is flat here, right? And so it has a platelet here, then it's thin. And so those clay particles, when they're sitting in the clay, they're all going different directions like this. And so when you start to wedge the clay, it starts to align them so they'll all overlap. And that will make the clay much stronger uh, when, you're, when you're trying to throw it. So those are the three the purpose for wedging the clay. Maybe um, somewhere between 20 and 50 times. 30 is usually pretty good on that one, on wedging the clay. Once then bring it up, push it down and away bring it up, push it down and away, and that's the technique we're going to be using. Eventually, you get it, and then you just kind of roll it into kind of a, a, a cylinder on those, and then you can flatten out a side like that, and then you need to attach it to the wheel. Uh, generally, on that one, you just take the clay piece up here, and you smack it down. Uh, I will tell you that when you're doing that, if um, the wheel is wet, one, it doesn't want to stick. Okay, uh, so that's one thing. But if there's water on there and you slap it down, it's going to splatter water on you and that sort of a thing. So please be aware of that. We want to get the, 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 the clay in the middle as possible. You'll notice in here when it's spinning, it looks like it's pretty much in the middle. That's a good thing. I'm just going to take and use my hands and just kind of push it down to make sure that it's going to stay as much as we can. Uh, with that. And so that's that's getting the clay on there. If you do have trouble getting the clay onto the wheel, please let me know. I can usually stick it on there. The, the, usually the problem is there's water on there. And so you have to stick it down extra hard and get some of that water out. If you just take a, a paper towel and you wipe off the surface so it's dry, the clay will probably stick for you uh, on those. And so that's, that's just kind of a deal. All right, so we have the clay attached and we're ready to go with that. 
Uh, there's a couple of controls on here. Let's see if we can bring this out so you guys can actually see it. Where is there? Hey, look, there's a foot control right over there. And you can do this sort of a thing. When you push on it, it goes faster. You let it up, kind of like a gas pedal sort of a thing. Um, I like to kind of set the, the wheel, so I'm just gonna, gonna set here at the speed I want. Let's say it was spinning about that fast, about a medium fast speed for it to, to get the center. Okay, and I like here when you when you have your foot on it and you're moving forward. A lot of times you you vary the speed. It goes fast. It goes slow. It goes fast. It goes slow. And you want it to be pretty consistent. So if you just kind of set it with your hand, and then you can just sit here and, and you can work on the wheel uh, with that one. If you need to slow it down, reach over here. You can slow it down just pretty easy like that. Uh, when you're working on that. Let me show you uh, one other thing I forgot to show you. You'll notice there's this plastic piece on, on the wheel. That just comes off like that, which is kind of cool. You'll notice that there's these little posts on the wheel. Now, some of them have a post on it like this does, and others do not. Um, if it doesn't, you work right on the wheel surface itself. Okay, just put the clay right there, boom, you're ready to go. If it has these little posts on it, that's designed for this plastic bat or some of the bats we have over here. And you can just kind of, you look through the hole there and then you just slide it on and then you can get the, the bat on so it stays like those. Uh, it's designed that way so when you're done, you can just pick it up and take it off and move it over and, and that sort of a thing. That's why we have the, the bats on those. So make sure you have the, the bat on it if it has to post. If not, when the wheel's turning like this, it's gonna run into your, your hand uh, you can see how the post is going to come over here. It's going to smack into your hand, and that's not a fun thing. And so make sure that you do have a bat on it if it has the posts on it. Let's go ahead and set the speed on this thing again. Um, the first step that we're going to make is called centering the clay. And you want it going maybe a medium fast speed. That's going pretty quick. Now you'll notice if I take and I just rest my hands on it, my hands going bumpity, 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 bumpity. Now that means that the clay is, is maybe too far this way or too far that way on the bat. So every time it goes around, it's hitting my hand and moving it off. Now, um, that's not centered, okay? So we want to get it in the middle as best we can. And really, that's, that's pretty darn close to getting it into the middle. Um, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our sponge. We're going to have a little bit of water on there. And you can just dribble it over the top like that. That's kind of a cool deal. And then we're going to hold our hands still. We're going to place them on here. And then we're going to tense our muscles and hold our hands still so the clay doesn't move around. Um, so ways you can do that. If you keep your hands together, like here, right at the heels, that will give you more control. If you take your elbows and you rest your elbows on your knees or on your thighs or something like this, or pull them into your side, something like this, that will make it more stable, okay? So that it doesn't move around a lot. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can sneak up and get a little bit closer to it so you're into this thing. Rather than trying to, to center it with your being way, way far away, you can get up and get close to it uh, on that one. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm just here. If, if my muscles are relaxed and it's not doing anything, this is kind of like a hand massage. It feels kind of nice, but you're not actually centering the clay. The goal is to tense your muscles here and push on the clay and hold your hand still. You'll notice that changed from now when I have my fingers on it, notice it's not going bumpity, 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 bumpity. Okay, that's, that's called centering. And so I'm, I'm here and I'm, so I got the heel of my hands together like this. I'm just going to keep my arms here and now I'm going to tense my muscles and I'm going to lean in on it with my body weight a little bit. You can hear the bat banging around a little bit. That means I'm pushing on it pretty good and it's staying still. And then you take your hands off and it becomes centered. That's your goal. The first step is becoming centered so it's smooth here all the way up and should be smooth on the top. For smoothing it on the top, once again, we can push on it. Then I can push down with my thumbs. So I'm pushing down here. I'm still pushing in. So you can see that I'm pushing in like that, right? That makes the clay go up. And then I'm pushing down on the top, kind of there and that makes it become centered. Now there is the part right here on the bottom of the wheel. This part a lot of times never gets centered because as you push down, you can't push it so, fa so flat that it squishes out. You just don't have the strength on that. So a lot of times there's extra clay. And so every time your hand goes around, you hit that clay and it goes bump, 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 bump. And so you're trying to center it with your hands doing this every time. 
And so if you find that, that that happens, you can take some of the tools we have here, like the, the rib tool, and you can just scrape off that extra little bit of clay so that the surface right here that you're working on is smooth and it's not going bumpity, 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 okay? Now this is, this is pretty smooth on that. Um, let, me, let me just knock it off center a little bit on that one so you can kind of see once again what we're going to do just by review. If we have hands on it like that, it's just moving. So tense your muscles. Lean on it, push it, hold your hand still. I find it's helpful that you're trying to push the clay off right through the middle. You're not trying to hit the side, but I have my hands right uh, centered here where they're joined together, and I'm pushing on it like that to have it become centered. Okay, that's step number one. If you get to this phase, I get you five points for checking it off, becoming centered. That's a cool thing. Um, it, it's the, the first step. So your first goal in your first day or two, this is all you're trying to do, is trying to get it to this location like that. Uh, the next step we have is um, making a, uh, like a small dog dish sort of a shape. And so what we're going to do with that is I'm going to take my hands, I'm going to rest them on the tray, I'm going to have them together again, and I'm just going to put a little dimple right here in the middle. Now when I put it in here, it's going to want to do this. So once again, i got to hold my hand still as I put that little dimple in so it doesn't move around very much. Okay? And then I'll put a little bit of water in. Now at this point, once you start working on the inside, you slow it down about half speed to where it is. So I'm going to come reach over here. I'm just going to slow that down a little bit. That probably looks... That looks okay uh, on those. And so I have that little bit of, hole, uh, of a hole there. So I'm going to hold my hands together and I'm going to push in a little bit and then I'm going to pull it back towards myself and widen it out just a little bit. Then I'm going to push my finger down in the middle again a little bit more and then I'm going to pull it back towards myself again. Once again, keeping my hands still. Now, I show this because this is what you're trying to do with your fingers. We got, it, we got a stick, right? I'm going to hold this stick really still, and I'm going to push it down here in the middle, like that. And I made a little bit of a hole, and then I'm going to take that stick, and I'm going to slowly widen it out, like that. Okay, that's what you're doing that's what you're doing with um, your fingers. I'm just sticking my hands down like in like this, and then I make a little bit of a hole, and then I just pull it, and I widen it out like that. Now, once you, this, this step here, you'll notice that it stays smooth on the inside. Um, it's possible to make it off-center, to make the hole off-center, so it's going around like this, rather than directly in the middle. The goal is to get it in the middle as much as possible on those. This is a dog dish. Okay? It's short. It's fat. It's about chihuahua size. If I had a little chihuahua, he could come up here and he can eat food out of the inside and he can kick it all he wants and it's not going to fall over. Right? It's short. It's fat. It's heavy. Okay? So it does have a function uh, for us on that. And it's the first step in making some sort of a bowl or some sort of a bottle or a vase or a cup or anything like that is being able to make this dog dish. You'll notice this is about uh, a half an inch wide, maybe three quarters of an inch wide, right through here. Now our rule was a quarter of an inch, right, that we had when we're doing our, our hand build stuff. And so we need to make this thinner uh, on those. So step number one, we centered it. Step, we got five points. Step number two, we made a dog dish. Check this off, you get five points. Step number three is trying to make the walls thinner. And when we make them thinner, they should go taller on those. And so let's, let's do that. Let's do that. So you can take your sponge and you can just run some water over it like this. You can run it on the inside. You can run it on the outside. If you need to put water more on the outside like that, you can just take your hand like this and then run water on your fingers and it'll lubricate the side so your hands slip through it. Now, if you're right-handed like I am, then you're going to be working on this side of the, of the wheel. If you're left-handed, you're going to be working on this side and we need to get the wheel going in the other direction. Okay, so um, the reason is this. So if I'm working over here in this direction like that, the clay is spinning this way, and it is leaving my fingers when I'm working this way. My control hand is my right hand, and I have that on the outside so I can control the clay uh, so it doesn't just you know, fly out off that sort of thing. My, my, my rest hand is on the inside, so I'm going to be working fingertips to fingertips, something like this, uh, and trying to make this thing a little bit thinner. Now, um, 
left hand obviously would be opposite. And so we see that the clay is actually leaving my fingers when I'm working in on like this. So the goal is this, I need to squeeze the clay together. So this is gonna be kind of a pinch technique here. So you see my thumb and my fingers on the, on the outside here. I'm just gonna take and I'm just gonna rest, I'm gonna hold my thumb here so I have control. And I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it together a little bit like that. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a dimple now on the outside, a little bit of a dent. And then I'm just trying to smooth it out. And I can do that just by pinching it. Like that, okay? So now it's a little bit thinner. The height on this one, um, it, it's not too terribly high. It's about, I don't know, what do we got? Maybe maybe three inches or so, two and a half to three inches. Let's get a little bit more water. Ideally, you're gonna be working fingertip to fingertip. Once again, I'm resting my elbows on my knees uh, on that, and then I have my hands always trying to touch each other on here. And so I'm just gonna pinch this together so you can kind of see on the outside here. Let's see if I can get around where you can kind of see what's going on on the inside. And so I'm just gonna take, and I'll, I'll push these things together here, and then I can pinch it together in that location, and then I'm just gonna pinch it together right here. I'm not gonna try to pull it too much, and then I'm gonna pinch together right here. So just in a few places, I'm just gonna pinch it. And I'm gonna squeeze right about here. And then down here at the bottom. Now the thing of it is, is I need to have more pressure on the outside. So push, pushing in here is dominantly what I'm doing. You notice it's not really going out too much. And most of your control, most of the stuff making it higher comes from pushing on the outside like that. But if we wanna make it thinner, we do have to do some squeeze here. So I'm gonna go just pinching in a couple of different locations again. I'm, I'm gonna widen this just a little bit so you guys can see inside a little bit better. So I'm just gonna take this and then I'm gonna widen it out about like that, okay? Okay, so when we can hopefully you can see inside over here and so I'm just gonna push right here to make it thinner. I'm gonna push right here to make it thinner. Once again, mostly just pushing on the outside. Now you can, probably as I get to the top, you'll see what happens a little bit better. This is what I'm doing all the way down, is I'm just taking like this, and I'm pushing in a little bit more to make it thinner. Okay? Now I'm looking at that thing, and it's, it's about four inches tall. Let me go grab a ruler really quick. That's the one thing I did. Your goal... Your goal, the next checkoff thing, is to make something that's four inches tall. Okay, so I'm just going to take this guy here, or four and a half inches tall, and then just going to slide my, 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 my hand down like this till it touches. And then as we rotate it, we got it right about four and a half. This is four right here, and so it's about four and a half inches tall. That's the next checkoff point is making something four and a half inches tall. And I did that just by squeezing. I didn't, didn't, didn't try to uh, pull it up or anything like that just by squeezing it together. That's the next checkoff point. You get that, you get five points. Yes. No, you get used to it, that sort of a thing. That was always cool. It's, it's, it's just clay. <laughs> okay, so here's the next step. The next step is I want you to try and make something that is tall. And so I'm just gonna take here down at the bottom. Once again, I'm gonna pinch the clay together and then I'm gonna keep my fingers the same distance apart. And then I'm gonna just gradually kind of pull up on them. You can't see it from the, from the camera view as much a lot of times, but you can see it from the front view from the camera view, it looks like it's not doing anything. It's just getting a little thinner on that one. Well, let's see what we did. We bring this tool back over here and we go here. That's six inches tall, okay, uh, on that. This is, this is one, two, three, four, five, six inches tall. And that's what the goal I have for you is, is to make something six inches tall. If you make something six inches tall, you get no, you get 60 points Whoa. on that one. The goal on making this tall is I'm going to give you 
10 points for each inch in height that you make it. So if you make it six inches tall like this one, it's 60 points. You make it five and a half inches tall, it's 55 points. You make it four inches tall, it's 40 points. If you do seven inches tall, you get 70 points. So it is possible to get extra credit points for making things taller on that. So yeah, there is a little bit of a criteria that I'm looking for. One, you have to be able to stick your hand inside. Okay, you can't take a piece of clay, squish it together, stick a pencil in it and say, look, I've made something uh, 12 inches tall. Okay, that doesn't work. You have to have your hand to be able to stick inside. Also, I want it to be out of about two pounds of clay. If there's a little bit more, that's okay. Um, a little bit less, that's okay. But I want it to be about two pounds of clay that you're working with. All right, and so that's what you're going to do. And then that's your final check off on this one is your height is being able to make something six inches tall. It is possible to make it taller. Let's see if I can. Are you allowed to like take the needle tool and like put it down and put it the You can for stuff that you want to save, absolutely. Uh, I'm just taking, I'm gonna drill, I'm just gonna work on making this taller again. So I got that going here and let's see if I can make it taller, if I can actually get on top of things. So once again, pinching my fingers together down at the bottom and I keep them about the same distance apart the pressure is coming from the outside, okay? I'm pushing in onto my fingers on the inside. Right hand is pushing onto the left hand. And we're trying to make it taller. Okay, so how do we do, how do we do? So that's about right there. That one is, that says about seven inches tall, and so that made it about to right here. So it is possible to make them taller on, on that for getting extra points, um, but you definitely want to get, um, get some points recorded on, on the height. Now I don't expect this to happen in one day. The first few days you're just gonna be working on center and getting that checked off. Once you have it checked off, you don't have to check it off with me again. Once you're, you're competent and you feel good about getting things centered, you don't have to check it off with me the whole time. Just once for your five points on that one. Once you get comfortable getting the dog dish made, you don't have to check it off with me after that. Um, you just go to the, do all that phase. Center it, make a dog dish, and then start making it thinner. Once you get your four and a half inches tall, you don't have to check it off with me again after that. Um, but what I would like this, let's say that I'm working on this piece and um, I, I measure it and I got seven inches tall and I'm feeling pretty good. And then I measure it, you, you call me over, I check it off, I write it down on, on a piece of paper that you made it tall enough, the seven inches tall. Um, after you've done that, you say, oh, I'm going to try and make it taller. And then all of a sudden you try to, and it falls wow. on that one. And so you, it fell. I don't take away your seven points. I, what you recorded, the seven point or the seven inches tall, that is recorded forever and ever. You'll never go back down. Let's say the next day you come in and you can only make something five inches tall. Well, you already have the seven inches tall recorded, so you're still at 70 points. I'm not going to drop your score uh, for it because you make things in varying heights. I just want the highest um, pot or highest thing you've ever made uh, to be recorded. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, with those. Okay, so what do we do if it's something we want to keep? One, we need to get the water out of it. I probably forgot to tell you the clay is pushed down the hole in the middle till it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Go figure. Um, I've just been doing this a long time, so I know it's about a quarter of an inch thick. If you're not sure, if you take a needle tool like this and you stab it down in the middle like that, so it goes all the way and then you slide your hand along the bottom like this till it touches, so your fingertips touch, and then you pull it out, you know that it's about that tall. Okay, that's how deep the bottom is, which is what I wanted, okay? Now sometimes when you make projects, um, either because of the, the um, it's not centered in the middle, but you may have one side that's taller than the other, this side's up, this side's down, something like that. And so if that happens, you can still save the project on those um, by just trimming off the top. Uh, trimming off the top, if you take your needle tool and you just slowly press it in till it touches your finger, not stabs your finger, but touches it like that, it cuts off a little section. And then you can just take that piece off like that. 
So if it's uneven on the top, now it's all smooth. I can take this here. I can uh, run my fingers over like this, sponge to smooth it out, and we're ready to go there. Okay, well, we have a secret message. Um, let's see, Serena? Uh, I don't see her. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, other things you can do. Um, this little piece area down here kind of flanges out a little bit. We want to clean that up. And so you can take, um, like your, your, your tool here, and your uh, wooden knife tool, and I'm just pressing down until it touches the, the wheel surface like that. And then you can take your needle tool. These are for pieces to save, and you run it under like that. And yeah, take that off like that. And so now down here, this is a smooth area. You can also take and use the rib tool for trimming things off, for smoothing things out, like that. If you want to make the clay go out, you can push out a little bit and make it go wider. We'll just make this one go a little wider all the way up. Right? So you can do things like that. The rib tool just helps keep things on track for us. So you can make them go wider. You can uh, make things go narrower if you want. You can take and try and squish them in this way. Oh, that's really sticky. And then to, to make it go narrower, oops. You can just kind of squeeze it together a little bit in a triangle type of a shape and it starts to go a little bit more narrow. It's not really forgiving, but you can you can you can make some alterations in that sort of a fashion. When you're ready to have it taken off, you need a wire tool. Let me get that real quick. Okay, so if this is something we're going to keep if we're on, if we have a surface where there's a bat on it, the only thing you have to do is you take and you run the wire tool through like that. And that's pretty cool. And if you have a bat on it, I can now take this off and take it over and um, put a, a plastic bag over it so it'll dry out slowly and have it ready to go. Okay. If you don't have a bat on it, let me put this thing here on the on the wheel. Here's what you do. One, I'm going to take this piece off here, like that. And I've already pulled the wire tool through. I've already cut it. That's the first thing. Usually wrap your hand around once like that, and then you pull it through. Then take a little bit of water and set it on one side like that. And then you take and you pull the water through. When it gets about halfway, it starts to slide a little bit. That time it didn't, which is cool. Now that there's water underneath it, you can take it and you can push it right here on the bottom, and it can slide right off the off the edge I'll slide it over here so we can see what's going on I can just slide it off onto my fingers like that right and then then you can take one of the wooden bats that's over there on the doesn't not one of the plastic ones because we want to make sure there's for real but one of the wooden ones there and you can take it and then just take it and set it down at an angle and then slide your fingers out from underneath it now it'll start to bend a little bit, but as soon as you take your fingers out, it goes back around again. And then you can take this over and store it in the um, storage areas over here. And that's a little bit about, about throwing. I want to do one more thing for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and hit the, the pauser on this thing.